Yay, food! <laughs> so really happy. Looks like there are more turquoise popping out as they gain c more color. Starting to see more and more turquoise, which is my favorite color. I love a deep copper too. So, um, yeah, need to start amping up the water changes so that um, we can take advantage of this really rapid growth period that they are in. So, bettas actually continue to grow throughout their entire life. If you take care of your betta, um, they'll they'll get ginormous before they die. They um, just never really stop growing. But I think the first, I'd say, you know, four or five months is of course when they're doing their most rapid growth. And you can really accelerate that by doing water changes and feeding really well in that. You can see in the back there, we have quite a large variation of size, of course. There, um, several hypotheses. People think that they secrete like stunting hormones on each other, things like that. I've thought about setting up experiments to do it, like to, or rather to figure out if it's something to do with physically sharing a territory or something that they secrete into the water that, um, you know, some kind of hormone that they secrete into the water that will affect other fish. But, um, I don't know. I just don't have a lot of room to experiment with um, fish that I really, you know, I want every fish to look good kind of thing. So, you know, uh, that poor tail dragger. Oh well, it happens. But anyway, these fish are going well. And I'm sure they'll do fine. I'm only going to be gone for 48 hours, so that's not too long. Alright, so I'm doing my first major water change on um, my fry, my CTPK fry. So you can see I lowered it about like 50%. I'm going to actually increase the water level higher than it was before. And um, basically, whenever I did the water change on these guys, I didn't touch the bottom. So you see I left the bottom completely intact. I didn't try to suck up any mulm or anything. It's not bothering the fry, and I don't want to risk sucking up any small fry. So, literally just change the water, and then I'm just going to add um, one tablespoon of salt. So I use just regular kosher salt. Make sure that it does not have iodine. If this thing would focus, you would... Okay, there we go does not supply iodide rather um, get non iodized salt and also salt that doesn't have any caking ingredients whatsoever it's just pure salt no additives just salt and um, finer grain stuff uh, dissolves much faster I put one tablespoon per five gallons and then I also treat with prime now that's all I do um, once they get to be this age, I stop adding any Indian almond leaves. That's really just for the spawning process. And um, the most crucial thing, I think, is that the temperature is the same. So hopefully these are both about 80 degrees. Perfect. About 80 degrees. Okay, a slightly cooler. But um, yeah, that's the most important part with fry. Betta fry are actually quite hardy compared to a lot of other fish. Um, so they're able to handle these larger water changes just fine. So anyway, that's how I change water on fry. I'm going to keep going. I'm actually going to be going to a conference this weekend. So I have to, uh, I'm doing water changes on everything and I'm going to do a couple more things before I leave. So I forgot one other major thing. Um, when you are replacing the water, use a cup. Um, um, well, actually, it doesn't matter how you put the water in, except that it has to be extremely gentle. One time I was in a hurry and I just took the bucket and poured it. This was a long time ago. I just took the bucket and poured it into the tank and I actually killed a ton of fry because, um, oh gosh, the lights just went out. I killed a ton of fry 
because the um, um, the force of the water hitting the glass actually like stunned and killed a bunch of them. So when you're um, doing water changes on fry, just be really uh, turning the lights back on. Just be really really gentle. So here I'm just going to demonstrate really quick because I have a lot to do tonight still. I actually put the cup all the way in and then just like kind of let the water go in. Like I don't pour. Okay, you can pour along the side that still has a lot of force. So what I do is I kind of half submerge it and just tip it in. So then you can see there's not a lot of disturbance. Like all the stuff over here is still largely undisturbed. Okay, so be really, really gentle with your fry. So quick update on the worm culture from, uh, that I got from Select Aquatics. I was really worried because all the worms disappeared for like a week. <laughs> but now you can see that um, I'm starting to be able to see them on the side of the culture. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, so uh, let's take a look at this. So normally this culture is in this drawer here. And let's see, two, four, what is today? I can't even keep track of my days anymore. I think, two, yeah, it's been like two weeks. Wow, time really goes by when you do daily videos. So one thing uh, that kind of freaked me out is there are a ton of these little things. Um, they're not mites. I don't know what they are. But there are, there's a ton of activity in here. As you can see, we have fungus gnats. We have, um, we had red wigglers in here, if you remember, in the unboxing video. So, um, yeah, there are a ton of other things that are living in here. But they don't seem to be um, impacting my, um, the worms at all, hopefully. Uh, I think I overfed a little bit at first, too, because I had some patches of fungus, but then I think these little guys eat fungus because it went away after a while. So yeah, I've just been sprinkling chicken feed, and um, I think they're doing okay. I think I have the moisture level right. There's not enough of them yet to um, congregate underneath these lids. Oh man, that's a lot of moving things. <laughs> so one thing is I always handle this culture last because my grindle worm and white worm cultures are really clean. They don't have a lot of these things, whatever they are. Yeah, see, I don't think they're springtails because I think they would be hopping if they were springtails because like I actually want to try springtails to feed. I'm sure the fish are gonna like eating these too. I just don't know what they're called. But anyway, I don't have enough worms to see them like feeding a lot at the surface, but I think it's like I see them poking out and then a little bit and then they kind of recede back into the soil. But yeah, there's definitely worms in here. I just need to be patient and let them um, multiply, I think. Because I gave them a really large container or large for me anyway so anyway crossing my fingers that these things don't get into my other cultures <laughs> um so hopefully they don't get in so one thing people kept commenting on is they asked why i didn't drill holes and this lid is really loose so see there's oops even when it's snapped down only these four points are actually snapped like the rest of the lid has a significant gap, see? So that's how air is getting in. Unfortunately, I'm a little worried because if air can get in like that, that means that um, those little uh, contaminating organisms can get out. So all my cultures, all my other Grindle cultures, I stuffed, well, I had them stuffed with um, just coffee filter paper. And then of course my white worms are in a different container. So hopefully they don't get in. Um, but yeah, we shall continue to see what grows. I'm gonna add some chicken feed. So 
So I'm going to run a little experiment. Um, on this side, I have two pieces of kibble, or cat food rather. And then on this side, I did the sprinkling of chicken feed like I have been doing. So we'll see. I'm just interested to see if like more of those, I don't think they're springtails, but whatever they are, are on this side. And then on this side and then I wonder if I'll find any worms over here or what'll happen I want to try varying the food of my worms more too um, you know who knows if they'll have better nutritional content or if it even matters but I'm gonna start feeding them more fish food that I'm not using but uh, yeah we'll see how this culture goes <laughs>